Hello, my name is Julia Lawrence and I'm an associate at Festival Bridge and I've put together this short learning unit to support arts and cultural and heritage organisations thinking about developing or expanding their online content and or online delivery to schools. The content aligns to the free digital toolkit produced by Festival Bridge last year uh, and you can follow this as a standalone unit around online safety, but over time we'll upload other units that are focusing on some of the other sections in the toolkit around uh, structuring your content, um, communication, so getting your content out to schools, what kind of platforms and tools are schools using at the moment, and uh, things like licensing and creative commons. So the aim of this learning unit is to help organisations understand the online safety requirements on schools. They're pretty robust. And if you're thinking about uh, delivering online at the moment, then you need to be modelling some of these uh, policies and procedures in your own practice. Uh, I want to help you in your thinking around creating an online safety plan and then signposting you to other help and guidance and resources so you can keep up to date over time. As the one thing about online safety is, uh, or online world, is that it's constantly changing. Alongside this presentation, there is also the uh, toolkit itself, here it is, making the most of your digital content for schools. We'll also separate out the online safety section within that and have that as a sef uh, separate file. I've also put a PDF of the slides uh, in the section, so you might want to print those off. I think there are five or six pages and then you can annotate and make notes as you go. All the resources and materials that I mention uh, I've pulled out the links and they're in a separate document, um, so you don't have to bother writing them all down. Um, they're all there and I've separated them out and labelled them for you. And then finally, there's a checklist. So you can work through uh, some of the things that I've talked about and you can tick them off as you go. So I probably don't need to say that these are unprecedented times and schools and settings across the country are at the front line. They're providing incredible services for the children of essential workers. They're supporting vulnerable children and also supporting parents and carers in trying to structure learning and other activities for their children. Uh, there are requirements also for schools to provide care for children on site, but there's no actual requirement on parents to homeschool their children. So schools might be creating content, but there's no uh, legal requirement on parents to be using that content to support their children. So um, there's a really uh, sort of uh, mixed picture of what's going on uh, in, um, in, in schools and in homes across the country at the moment. So as I said, all schools and colleges will have really robust policies and procedures in place already to support and protect the whole learning community. So that's not just the children and young people in the schools, but it's also thinking about protecting the teachers and non-teaching staff and the parents too. And many schools also provide support for the wider community. So secondaries might support primary schools around online safety and primaries might support community settings. I've seen some primary schools that work with their local library and children's centres to help in um, online safety understanding. The school's procedures are in line with this document, I'm sure. Uh, those that have been involved in safeguarding procedures for your organisations, you'll be familiar with the DfE's statutory guidance. There is an ever-growing annex in uh, this document, I think it's on page 96 in the 2019 document, around online safety. So your organisation should take a look at these and understand the requirements and procedures uh, that schools are having to deal with. Now, I've just printed off this page, uh, which is the first page of the annex, and there's quite a helpful way uh, of, of thinking about online safety uh, that uh, is used by the DfE and is also used by Ofsted, and it's called the three C's. So thinking about online safety in terms of content, contact and conduct. So content around uh, the kinds of things that young people are seeing online. How do they know if it's appropriate? How do they know if it's legal? Uh, how do they know what to do if they do come across this kind of stuff? And uh, I suppose this really impacts on school filtering systems. It needs to filter enough to keep the truly offensive stuff out, but also 
Uh, there's kind of been lightening up around filtering a little in schools, just so that children um, aren't completely locked and blocked in what they see in school, so that they do know what to do if they come across things that, uh, that aren't appropriate. Contact is uh, who young people are connecting with online. Um, and are they harmful interactions? And again, um, do children know what to do? Children and young people know what to do if they come across somebody that might be posing as um, a child when they're clearly not or um, or sometimes not clearly not. What are the signs? And then conduct. So what is appropriate behaviour online? And obviously most schools are looking at this um, as an extension of, you know, just what is appropriate behaviour in the real world. So uh, this kind of work is often dealt with within PSHE lessons in schools um, and links to things like uh, online bullying and uh, the making and sending of inappropriate materials online and that kind of stuff. So at the end of March, um, I don't know if uh, people have, have, have noted that the DFE put out some interim guidance to support schools in keeping children safe, including online, during the coronavirus pandemic. So acknowledging that obviously schools are now um, uh, using uh, online methods to connect with children and with families at home. And it's looking at particularly at things like streaming, but all sorts of other things in there. And I strongly advise you to have a look at the document, particularly the online safety section within that. Now, up until a year or so ago, I was an online safety mark assessor for schools with the UK Safer Internet Centre and Southwest Grid for Learning. It's one of the kite marks that schools can go for, online safety mark. You're probably aware of arts mark. It's uh, in the suite of many kite marks that schools can go for. And the great thing about the online safety mark is there's a free auditing tool embedded within the process. So it's called 360 Safe. You can Google it. I put it on the resources document uh, and you can access it online. Um, and it allows schools to really drill down into their provision and assess what they have and what they need. It's divided into four sections, policy and leadership, infrastructure, education and standards and inspection. Uh, so leadership is around, you know, who leads it in the school? What are the policies? What's the reporting? Uh, and uh, what, what are, what's some of the guidance around uh, communication technology? So um, social media, for example, and um, how staff and young people might communicate with each other on what channels and uh, what's acceptable around that. The infrastructure is around passwords, uh, security breaches, data protection, GDPR. The education is for children, so where does it appear within the curriculum for children and young people, but also for staff. What kind of professional development are teaching staff and all staff getting around online safety? because uh, as with safeguarding uh, disclosures um, from young people might happen to any member of staff in the community. And then monitoring. So uh, the standards and inspection sounds a bit grand, but really it's, you know, how do you know that these systems are working? Uh, what's your review process? And uh, when you're reviewing it, then what are you doing to then sort of plug the gaps and, and work out uh, where you can uh, develop your procedures to ensure that that kind of stuff doesn't happen again. Now, the great news is that Southwest Grid for Learning and the UK Safer Internet Centre have also produced a version of this for other organisations that work with young people outside of formal education. It's called Online Compass. Again, I'll put a link to the resource on, um, on the document. And again, it includes a free auditing tool. Not quite uh, as hefty as the school's auditing tool. Um, it just has three sections uh, with several parts. Uh, the management, so again, policies and leadership and reviewing. Uh, people, which is training of staff and supporting young people. And then technologies around personal devices. Now, some of this um, may not be appropriate for your organisation because it talks a lot about uh, organisations that might have a building where young people might visit, so they might be on the system, on the uh, organisational system, and your organisation uh, might not be uh, wanting to do that at all. So just pick and choose. Pick and choose the sections that are appropriate to you now and might be appropriate to you uh, in the near future and just work on those. Ignore the rest. This is a screen grab of uh, the PDF, so it's not the online tool. 
but it will ask you to assess yourself uh, around uh, a particular area. This is around the policy. Are there policies and guidance in place for managing online safety of all users and does everyone understand them? And you'll grade yourself around that. And then it will pop up with either uh, 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 with, with a level red amber or green and then uh, you drill down and it will give you guidance so the next steps to help your organization move on it's all really great advice in there i would say the one thing about the tool is that the resources that they link to some of the urls need updating they're aware of this and they're working on it so use the ones that i put in this presentation uh, as they are more up to date more current ignore the ones that are in the tool but the tool itself is sound so once you've worked through this, you're going to have a bit of an action plan, a bit of a to do list. And I imagine that most people's is going to look like this. Uh, you're going to need to look at your policies, look at your behaviour agreements or acceptable use agreements, um, sort out a named lead. It might be your safeguarding lead, but you might need to just think about that. Creating a plan uh, and a training plan and a keeping up to date plan, a system to log incidents an escalation plan, and then some kind of review and monitoring system. And then making sure everyone knows, everyone knows what's in your policy and what the procedures are. And I'm just going to work through those quickly. You don't need to take a note. They're in a separate uh, document at the end of this presentation. But I'm just going to work through each and give you a bit of help and some advice around it. So policies. There are lots of template policies out there for organisations working with young people in and outside of school. I would have a look at this NSPCC one as your first protocol. And I put another uh, example document, which is uh, a sample from a youth sports organisation. And that's on the resources page. So have a look. And again, pick and choose. You don't need all of the sections that are in these documents. You might only need some. But pick and choose the ones that are relevant to your organisation at the me at the moment. The thing about policies are they're not a, a tick box activity. They should be a kind of a living, breathing thing. So as your provision grows, you should be going back to your policy and just checking that you're covered and then adding in as necessary. When you're happy with your policy and it's been ratified by whoever has to do that in your organisation, then stick bits of it or all of it. Uh, alongside your online learning programme or uh, or resources. You can see here that the Royal Opera House on their learning platform and they've got some great stuff on there for the teaching of dance and music and uh, DT, I think. Uh, but they've also put their online safety policy in amongst the resources for the teachers. And it's just, I guess, reassurance for schools that you know what you're doing, that you've covered yourself and children and teachers that might be engaging in whatever it is. Acceptable use agreements or behaviour agreements, online behaviour agreements, are for any organisation that might be thinking about two-way communication with uh, children and young people. So live streaming, video conferencing, Zoom meetings with young people, you'll need a behaviour agreement in place. Uh, this is again from the NSPCC and um, again, pick and choose, pick and choose the sections that are relevant to whatever the project is that you're involved in. So the first one on here, I will be responsible for my behaviour when using the Internet, including social media platforms. Um, this includes the resources I access and the language I use. I will not deliberately browse, download. This um, might be appropriate for you, but you might want to tailor it. Uh, if you are connecting with uh, young people at home, um, there might be expectations around uh, always using um, an image or another backdrop so that you're not actually seeing the young person in their home setting. Um, and you might want uh, a clause in there around uh, if you're communicating on a, a particular platform and you've decided that's the platform on which you will work, that actually the young people won't talk about the project or talk about each other or um, participants in the programme on other platforms. I've seen um, some uh, messy projects where uh, there's sort of been leakage over whatever the accepted uh, platform is and uh, discussions have then taken place on TikTok and Facebook and actually the organisation had no idea but it was a reputational issue for the organisation because they were being mentioned in the post and there was some really nasty online bullying going on. So it's kind of thinking about worst case scenarios 
and uh, getting children to sign up or young people to sign up to a code of conduct around there. Um, young people and pupils are um, really used to doing this. All schools will have these in place. And often uh, children and young people will be involved in deciding some of the clauses that might go into that policy. So deciding themselves what's acceptable and what isn't. And that's quite a good idea for the start of, a, of any kind of programme. It's not just the children and young people that need the agreement, but also any adults involved in the programme too. I've put a link into London Grid for Learning. They uh, provide broadband and other services to schools and they have lots of resources on their website, including policy templates. Now, not all of these clauses will be appropriate for you, but again, pick and choose. There's a couple here that I've just picked out that I thought might be appropriate. You know, I will not contact or attempt to contact any pupil or young person or to access their contact details in any way other than the approved organisational monitored ways, etc. Uh, I understand the importance of upholding my online reputation, my professional reputation and that of the school or the organisation. You know, this kind of stuff can be just be lifted and adapted. So it's making sure that the adult involved in the programme is safe and that the young person is safe and they know what the boundaries are in the programme. So these are really important documents. And normally in schools, at least, um, young people or teachers would sign them. Agree a named lead and keep up to date. So um, there's lots of stuff out there to help you around this. Uh, with the with the named lead, you might feel that actually your safeguarding lead, if you're a very small organisation, it's just fine to have your safeguarding lead. If it's a larger organisation, you might want somebody with particular responsibility for online safety as uh, it, there's quite a lot to keep on top of with online safety. But there's lots of advice and support out there. The NSPCC does lots of training around safeguarding. They have ones that are particular for online safety. Here's a, a beginner's online safety training, £35 for four hours of training online. I think it took me slightly less than that. So that's quite a good value intro one. Lots of organisations provide uh, free content and guidance. Parent Info is a great organisation. It's... Um, Ooh, digital parenting, I think, with CEOP. Uh, and they provide information around uh, lots of areas of, of, of child well-being, including online safety. And obviously it's, it's targeted at parents, but anyone working with young people would find this site useful. There's also a widget on there that you can embed in your own site. So it takes a feed. So if you want to keep parents informed, you can very easily. And it's open to any organisation. Internet Matters is a collaboration between education and technology organisations. I think BT and others are involved in this, producing lots of great advice and guidance, again, for parents and for teachers. The UK Council for uh, Internet Safety is a collaboration between DCMS, the Department for Education and the Home Office, and again, quite a good one to bookmark. And I put lots more on the resources help sheet. So again, don't have to make a note of those. Um, they're all in the resources sheet. Incidents and escalation plans. Uh, you need to think about how incidents are going to be logged. You probably have procedures in place within your safeguarding policy. So you could just use these or you may want to have a separate log for online incidents. If you are doing streaming to young people or involved in any two way communication, then you also need to have a place for the young people to log if there are any issues or they feel unsafe, uh, unsafe online in one of your programmes. So the young people need to know how to communicate these or if they disclose to an adult outside of your organisation, then uh, you need to have a system for the adult to report to you as well. So, um, so that is something to consider. You also need to have an escalation plan. So with these, you need to think about the kinds of minor issues that might happen online right up to the worst case scenario incidents and how you will deal with those. Um, if you have a look at some of the templates on, for example, London Grid for Learning, a school online safety policy, they will have a really elaborate way of reporting all sorts of incidents in there. But you might want to just take a quick look to see how schools are doing it. Uh, so once you've thought through uh, as many scenarios as you can, um, get them logged. And uh, at, for most people on staff, um, they are just going to know that they report that incident to whoever your online safety lead is or the safeguarding lead. 
That's their step. And the rest of those steps are for that person to then take forward. But everybody needs to know what to do in case of an issue. Here's a uh, great um, resource for anyone working with young people, children, and young people. It's funded by the European Commission. I don't know what happens at the end of this year, but uh, it's it's good for the moment. So so keep it bookmarked. And it's a helpline for all professionals working with children and young people in the UK with any online safety issue they may face themselves as a professional or with children in their care. And this organisation, again, part of UK Safe Internet Centre and Southwest Grid for Learning, they have connections with all the big technology organisations. So um, I was involved a couple of years ago in um, an issue that a school had where uh, somebody had posted something on a Google review that was inappropriate. And we worked with uh, the Professionals Online Safety Helpline to get it taken down. So they have access to some of those tech giants that us mere mortals would never have access to. So this is a great one to note in your policy and to have uh, at your fingertips in case of any issue. So back to that to-do list, I hope some of these things have been helpful. There are policy templates you can use. Your named lead can be your safeguarding person or another person within your organisation if you uh, want to share the responsibility. Create a training plan for that lead person and uh, a ways of keeping up to date, which is basically signing up for some of the newsletters from some of the organisations um, that I've mentioned. Agree a system to log incidents. Know the escalation plan, ensure all staff know the escalation plan and then devise a system to review and monitor. So looking at the log list, seeing if there are common issues, if the common issues can be addressed through a change in the behaviour agreement, for example. Uh, and then communicate it out. Make sure everyone knows it. As I said, you know, online safety policies and procedures are living, breathing things and they need to adapt as technologies change, as children and young people's use of technology and social media changes and as your organisational plans change around online delivery. My uh, word of, of, of caution with it is that, you know, the issue does need careful thought and consideration. You know, repercussions of issues going wrong online are, are huge, but don't let the fear put you off doing amazing things in the online world and don't get so bogged down in coming up with the policies and procedures that you just don't have time to develop new content. You know, think about it, address them, revisit your policies when necessary uh, and, and as your programme grows. I read about a teacher on Twitter this morning and he said that his role in school um, since they closed a couple of weeks ago, have basically been to revise the online safety policy as the school's program of online delivery had um, increased and he'd done three revisions I think in the two weeks so you know it just goes to show these 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 documents need to evolve as provision evolves and um, so it's not something that's a tick list and you've done it uh, it's just on the back burner simmering away uh, as you think about your next steps so work through the checklist don't disappear, disappear down an online safety wormhole. Check out the toolkit. Uh, there's a bit more advice in there. Check out the resources. There's loads of stuff um, in, 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 those, uh, in the links that I've given you. Sign up to the relevant newsletters and then share up to date information with colleagues. It might be that occasionally, you know, once a term, once a half term, you're just putting out a bullet, uh, bullet point list of, of, of sort of updates and interesting stuff around online and online safety. And then my final note on this is... Digital inequality is a thing, so don't forget analogue. Uh, the Carnegie Trust brought out a report last year, switched on reports, and it showed that 83% of 12 to 15 year olds have their own smartphone, smartphone which is uh, great news, but it means that 17% don't. And even of those 83%, connection is not the same as access. And what they mean there is that, you know, a young person might have a phone, but it might be old. It might not be able to update. Some apps might not be able to update. Connectivity might be an issue if they can't afford um, to update their package, their SIM package. You know, so, uh, so a young person might only have an outdated phone with limited with limited data, you know, and that that is not the same as having, uh, you know, your own laptop, your own desktop at home, which many young people do have. So connection is not the same as access. So, you know, consider providing resources that enable analogue offline activity, you know, PDFs and other documents have their place. 
with some guidance around doing some uh, real life activity, you know, and schools and other settings can then print those off and send them home. So, um, you know, consider that too. It doesn't need to be all singing and all dancing. So that's it for this unit. I hope it's been useful. We have a survey and I would be hugely grateful if you could complete it for us. It's uh, in the links um, in this section. Uh, we would like to know if this has been helpful, if anything else might have been useful, uh, what else could be included, for example. And also, if anyone wants to share an example of their online safety policy, please do. Um, it might be that we could uh, share some of these uh, or examples of these in some way in the future. So that's it. My name is Julia Lawrence. I, uh, I'm an associate at Festival Bridge. And uh, thank you for listening to this unit on online safety.